remote cameras and remote hearing devices. Uh, they did see some fluid. Uh, we've collected a sample of that and we've sent it to a lab for testing. We're not sure what it is, but uh, we're, we're telling this is part of our investigative process as we've described before. We also have the first victim, that the first one that we identified on uh, Saturday, actually the day of the incident. Uh, but we were unable to get to that person. Uh, we still are unable to. That area of the building is very, very precarious, and it's quite a distance from where they can actually get, but they could see uh, a portion of the victim. We have managed to collect uh, a sample. Uh, we're not sure uh, if, if it's viable, but we will, uh, using a remote method, we did that. Uh, we're sending that to a lab also. The goal is to try and obviously uh, identify uh, anything that we can identify and uh, give family, at least that family, closure. Uh, the dogs were in, uh, they did not, and we sent two different types of dogs in. We did not have any live hits uh, uh, today. Uh, we will do another uh, one or two complete sweeps top to bottom of the building tomorrow. We did have uh, some hits in the area where we collected that first sample. So it's still a uh, situation where we have not come to any definitive conclusions on the final person that's missing. But as the process goes, uh, you see from these press conferences that we do day in, uh, you know, every, uh, several times a day, it is a, a tedious and a dangerous process. And uh, we'll continue doing it and, and to bring this thing to a, a conclusion for uh, all the families involved. Thank you. Um, I'm, going uh, well, I'm sorry, Madam Mayor. Let me comment too uh, from an engineering side. So <clears throat> we talked this morning about all the different uh, resources we're bringing in and how we're monitoring this building. We had a situation today with a crane uh, near the, near the uh, back, the furthest from Canal Street, the one that appears to be the most damaged, actually moved. We're monitoring this with some pretty sophisticated equipment. We've got engineers. It moved about an inch in one direction that we were not expecting, and it would not be just from normal uh, uh, def wind deflection, uh, and, and it did move back. So it tells us that this thing is moving, and as we said, this is a very dangerous building. Uh, the engineers have told us so. Uh, firefighters are. Uh, take, taking, uh, you know, measured risk to, to get their job done, but people need to understand that, that that is the type of thing we're dealing with. And this is a, you see the size of our evacuation zone, and that gives you the uh, idea of the potential impact that we could face. No, thank you, Chief. And we have also been monitoring the weather, as we reported earlier this morning, uh, and we do have updates as it relates to that, which are precautions that we're taking. Director? Thank you. So we've been monitoring the wind all day from a weather station that we put up in the area on a building here. Uh, we experienced our first south winds today. They were not that strong, but uh, the south winds are a concern uh, with the way that second crane uh, near the Iver Iverville Street is positioned. Um, we need to talk about the fact that we've been in contact with the weather service. Uh, there is uh, a potential tropical disturbance out there uh, off the Yucatan right now. Uh, it is tracking more towards our area and some of the models. They just up the, uh, you know, to about 40 percent the chance of development. Uh, we're looking at a timeline. I spoke to the Weather Service just before I came out here. Uh, we're looking at a timeline of about Friday to Saturday. It's, it's very early, but, you know, just saying this could be a potential tropical depression, maybe a tropical storm. They, they're looking more at the depression, but with that you could expect south southwest winds on this track 20 30 35 miles an hour and the rain that would accompany that so this is obviously something that's very concerning to us and that we will continue to follow extremely closely uh, all through tonight tomorrow um, through the weekend thank you colin uh, dr vegno can you give us an update um, yes, today we were able to deploy um, several levels of mental health resources. We have mental health counselors and those trained in mental health first aid that will be available at the main library. They've been there uh, today. They will be there during daytime hours, available for anyone who needs to, um, to talk or to get resources. Uh, we will also have someone who is trained in Spanish as well if English is not your primary language. We continue to have on-site counselors uh, for our workers, our first responders, and our personnel. And we've been in, con in touch with the construction companies asking them to connect their workers in need of services. We urge anyone who's been affected by this, if you need help or if you know someone who is in crisis, please call the crisis line 826-2675 or 911 if you feel it's serious. Thank you. Thank you so much. 
Chief Ferguson, you want to speak on traffic patterns? I know we're, they're going to I mean, stay the same. Yeah, traffic patterns. Good, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Mayor. Traffic patterns are going to continue to be the same. We are continuously uh, assessing and adjusting as necessary. Uh, we are thanking the public once again for the cooperation. We ask you, encourage you to continue to ride share, continue to carpool as much as possible. And if you can, work remotely, work remotely. However you may be able to do it, we're just asking you to please stay out of the area, continue to work with us with this. We have been very successful with the traffic uh, flow thus far, and we are looking forward to continue this process. Thank you. Thank you. And we will continue uh, to remain focused also on the businesses that have been impacted in uh, the area. Uh, I did uh, sign a letter, uh, presented it to uh, the governor uh, this afternoon as it relates to small business administrative assistance. Uh, that will be forthcoming in terms of what comes from that. But um, the state, through the governor, has remained a true partner in this operation. So are there any questions? And Latanya, you can move us through. Yes, Madam Mayor. The advocate? Uh, Chief, uh, you mentioned this morning that the engineers were having trouble <coughs> coming up with a plan to stabilize the building in frames. Are you any closer to a, a plan to do that? We are not. Uh, if anything, it, it's gotten, uh, you know, it, it hadn't been the best news, uh, that, that it doesn't uh, appear that we'll be able to use cranes uh, to, to stabilize this, to, take this crane apart or stabilize it. So we're working on uh, other other operations and other ideas of how do you secure it. We've looked at several different things and no conclusions yet. You know, we need to uh, kind of get some kind of consensus from our, we, we use what we call, you know, technical specialists in, in any type of operation, whether it's a collapse underground or an explosion, every single thing that we do, we, we got to bring when it's not something that we have the expertise in, we bring in the people that do that. And we have, as I said, we have the finest uh, experts, we believe, in town, they have uh, uh, tons of experience with these type of uh, incidents, and we have not come to a conclusion as to how we're going to uh, mitigate this situation. So it does remain a very dangerous, dangerous building. Box eight. Um, I just wanted to clarify on the um, fluids that were found for one person. Is that for two people? We found a fluid in one area that we were searching this morning that we talked about. In a totally different area, we have the person that we found on Saturday fluids that we found today in the, the area that we're searching for the person that's unknown. We don't know what the fluids are. It was in a remote area with a camera. We had, we had spotted something that the guys thought could mean something. So they sent the re remotely, they sent a, 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 a reach into their a, a apparatus to reach into there with a swab, get a sample, and send it to a lab. Uh, and we'll progress from where, where that is. If it's, if it's something human, we'll take the next steps to identify that if it, who that person would be. Chief, just to clarify, you suspect it could be bodily fluids and you sent them off for DNA testing, is that correct? Correct. More well, for identification. You know, if, if it, identification says it's human, then it'll be DNA, and then uh, who, who's DNA? I'm I'm distressed distressed so are y'all releasing any names at this point on uh, the people you are searching for inside? Any, any name? No. Any names that get released will, will obviously, in the first case of the person we, we recovered, uh, would come from the coroner's office, and uh, anybody who we have not uh, confirmed, we won't be releasing their names. And you kind of explain at this time. the protocol. God forbid, if, if something were to come down, what is the plan? If something does come down. Well, you see the evacuation zone we have. That's why that plan is in place. The evacuation Stay zone is our, our mitigation for if it comes down. And uh, if you've been observing the scene, you see no one enters this. No one enters this without going through a single checkpoint their names, their business, uh, who, who they're working for, and what is their business in that area. And that's documented upon ingress as well as egress from the from the impact zone. Do you all, do you all know if someone was inside a crane operating it before the collapse happened? The, the, yeah, that'll, be, that'll be part of the investigation. There's logs and, and uh, stuff available. So. WWL? Uh, you said the crane moved about an inch. It doesn't sound like a lot. That it, could be concerning. It does not sound like a lot, but that's, uh, it's, it shouldn't be moving any. I mean, it, it may sway with, with wind and stuff. I mean, obviously it's a crane, it's picking up loads and everything else, but it has not moved at all. It doesn't have any loads on it. It's not moving, at the, you know, what, it, what its normal job would be. It has not moved at all since Saturday until today. So it definitely gives us reason for pause. Um, you know, we, you, you may have seen a little bit of heightened uh, movement to, to head in that direction. 
uh, with the engineers to go see it, and, and uh, it, it did start to go back the other way. But once again, that's a movement we don't want to see. And is, is the front crane any concern as well, or is that staying still? The front crane still? is still very much so. If you're, uh, yesterday we talked about, originally we thought it was only the, the rear crane further from Canal Street that had the most uh, obvious deflection in it and everything. When engineers came in and inspected the front crane, they said it is equally as damaged. It's not uh, dent, but you have a lot of mechanical damage from the, the building collapse and the concrete slabs and everything that are uh, impinging against it and cause some pretty critical damage to it and, and equally is in danger of collapse. USA Today. Uh, can you speak to what engineers have advised you of so far? Anything that sticks out to you? Just give some insight into what they are telling you. Yeah, we, we've looked at several different options. One, to, to try and attach it back to the building in some way to stabilize it. Uh, they advise against moving it in any way, shape, or form, uh, and didn't believe it was uh, safe enough to even work around it. Uh, originally, we brought in some big cranes to try and thought we would be able to grab it, and that was before we had the, the real you know, expert uh, engineers on the scene, and they said that's not not an option. You you'd probably topple the, the crane that attached to it. So we've been looking at a bunch of different options, but um, they've done calculations on, on you know what you can actually do. If if there is no way to secure the building before a tropical disturbance comes into the area, you mentioned earlier the historic nature of the properties around it. Would there be some kind of effort to protect things like the Sanger Theater or something in that area? There, there's no protection of that thing coming down. One side of it, if you look at that crane shaped like a T, one side of that T is over 40 tons. There's nothing you, there's nothing you could do. We, 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 we are aware of it. We're working to see what protocols and what the engineers are going to suggest. This is a fairly new development that that storm, you know, just this morning that storm wasn't where it is right now, obviously, in development and, and location and projected path. And sorry for the graphic nature of this question, but can you describe the liquid any further in terms of color or what? It, it, you know, they use a remote camera to okay. get it. In their opinion, it was uh, something that they said it was some kind of fluid, and it's worth investigating. I mean, these guys, I, I cannot emphasize how uh, proud I am of the, the, the men and women of the Norris Fire Department who do this. Their expertise, they've been to uh, five deployments, to Stone Six, Count, <laughs> Count Michael. Deployments. Uh, you know, they, they do this for a living, and they saw something that, that was not normal for a construction site and decided that it was a sample, and we certainly backed their opinion. We looked at the picture, uh, and, uh, you know, so we went ahead and took a sample, and we'll see what the labs are produced, we'll have, uh, hopefully fairly quickly. Uh, Superintendent, I'll, I'll give you a crack at this, and then we'll wait. Uh, talking about the, the tropical depression, I mean, we may get, you said this building is very dicey. Uh, what kind, could you expand a perimeter? Like, what, there's got to be some kind of thought process going in there. there, there right? is. Let me, let me explain. Issues. So, you saw when they told us how bad the first crane, the second, the crane closest to Canal Street was after we had already set up a perimeter. Our perimeter increased very slightly for, uh, you know, that, that front crane. We have a perimeter that would entail the entire length of that crane, both vertical and horizontal added together, plus 25% plus another factor. That's the formula, mechan the engineering formula for its furthest, your, your furthest reach. We added something more to that, and so we already have that. So no, we would pray that it don't come down and damage any of the buildings, but that kind of becomes beyond our control. This is not something, obviously, that, that you know we, we created, nothing we want, but our job is to prepare for an answer to disasters when they happen and then mitigate the potential impact, and that's what we're doing right now. Is there anything you want to add at this point? I would just add, we're kind of writing the book on this right now. We, we keep hearing words like, you know, impossible, uh, unpredictable. Uh, we're, our team's working together. I mean, collecting the sample today, we had NOPD working closely with the task force to teach them how to take a sample, you know, on the fly. This is, this is new space right now that we're working with. Had anyone, had, had a member of the public or any city or any employees there reached out to the city at all, concerned about the construction at the way it was going? Had that happened at any point in time? No. Is there any way to gauge in the incoming weather and the likelihood that there will be further collapse in this building? There is absolutely a very good likelihood of further collapse of this building. I have no doubt. We talked about it yesterday. As you get rain, it's going to add water to this building, which is a tremendous amount of weight. It's going to also add lubricant. So a lot of these pieces you see dangling precariously, well, friction's holding them in place. And so to, to, as more water hits it and it, and it uh, acts as a lubricant, you can easily see things start to slide off in this building. 
and you know our, our prayer is that it doesn't impact the cranes and cause something catastrophic. But suffice it to say, our evacuation zone is sufficient. Our, our struggle is people need to have common sense. If you see a barricade, don't cross it. Don't walk around this building. Don't come sightsee. So we're asking for it once again, just like we do in the traffic. Community, you know, cooperation is, is critical in this. We believe if everybody stays out of the evacuation zone, we're fine. I can't, you know, once again, you can't speak for what other uh, damage may be done to property, but remember, life and property. Chief, can you refresh us on the uh, specs of the crane? It's 270 tall. What's the T? You gotta, you gotta the... test my, my memory here, but uh, the uh, tallest one um, is, I think, 308 to its very tip. The other one, I think, is 266. The boom on the tallest one that stretches out, the long arm that stretches out is 164 and 131 on the short one. And what's the tonnage? I'm going to walk out of here and go make sure I, I gave you the right number. But we'll get that to you. But that I'm almost 100% sure that's the uh, numbers because we did our calculations based on it. I was with the engineers when they were doing those calculations. And what's the weight? Uh, I don't have the weight of all the, the entire grain, the components of it, but that short boom that has the weights, the, the, the counterbalance part of it, is 40 tons. Have there been discussions with some of the properties around this building about what could happen? Yes, or what as, they we, as we evacuated them, they obviously got an explanation from us and, and an apology <laughs> that you know, we had to do this. But it's for their own safety and everyone understood it. You know, we did not have anyone complaining. Everyone understood uh, this is this is a, a, a very much a life safety issue at this point. But I guess All in right. terms of this disaster and Last ending, question. Uh, is there is there kind of another message saying, hey, this might happen if you have anything important, get this out or anything like that? I'm sorry, what do you mean by that? If, if Them getting something out of their building? Correct. They're out already. Yeah. There's no yeah. going back in the building and getting stuff. I will say this, we have worked very closely with uh, people in these properties and help people get things that they need, either through the health department getting them um, medicines and medications that they you know couldn't go back in and get. So we're working as close as we can. You've heard the, the messaging that we've gotten people rooms, work work through the, the responsible party to secure those and everything. But you know, when you evacuate, you evacuate. <laughs> we should get that message to people in hurricane season more. <laughs> we say evacuate, we mean get out. And so I, uh, you know, I don't, I do not in any way mean to make light of it. But no, there's no, we're not letting people go back in and, and get something. It's, and that it's also includes the vehicles that we know are still in the adjacent parking lot. Uh, they'll probably be going another uh, couple of hours tonight at least. But once again, uh, I can't stress enough. I'll investigate. I'll probably let the, the chief talk. And as investigations go where they take you, you discover something that causes you to do something different, we'll, we'll, we'll operate as long as we have to. But if right now, it'll probably go a couple more hours. Uh, we're trying to do a, a few more sweeps of the entire building. Just make sure we haven't missed anything. I'm confident my team has done well. but. In these type of situations, you can never be too confident when you have it recovered everyone that you believe to be necessary. Is there a time where we will move from rescue to search Obviously. Yeah. Do you have an indication or an idea of when? No, but I, I can just say this. It, in these type of operations, in this type of collapse, so I guess managing people's expectations, you hear of miracle recoveries and collapses, right? You hear, um, I believe it was Haiti. You know, a week out, week and a half out, they recovered someone. That was a single-story grocery store, right? The woman had food, she had water. A, a collapse like this is a pancake-type collapse of a massive structure like this. It becomes very, very small once you get past three days. But we're praying and hoping for the best. But that's that's the truth of where we are right now. Probably you under, you probably get under 10% after you get past three or four days. Thank you all. Thank you.